actually impacting people within the city of Lynn, working for organizations that mostly do uh, gang violence prevention. This is, I will confess, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is my dream job, Sean. I'm the best in the community and I'd like to give back to the community that's given me so much. We had focused on several sites initially. Well, I, I think this is where Dave and I, you know, do a group. <laughs> Welcome to the Lynn Cam TV show where we talk about organizations and events happening in the city of Lynn. Today with me, we've got Dan Cahill, City Council President and Mayor Judy Flanagan Kennedy, and we're here to talk about the City of Lynn 2014 review and 2015 vision. Guys, thanks for being here today. Um, really appreciate it. We've got a lot to cover. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to just kind of let our viewership know who you guys are, in case they don't know, um, and what it is you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Dan, we'll start with you. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it being here. Mayor, always a pleasure being here with Same you as well. Uh, I am a city councilor at large, so I'm, I'm voted uh, in by the, by the folks all over the city of Lynn. Uh, there are four at large councilors in the city. There are seven ward councilors. And uh, I've been elected now to the council since 2007, I think was my first election. I know I'm getting. I'm getting uh, seasoned. <laughs> when, you when you first run, it's you know you got to run you know, somebody with uh, with new ideas and new experience. Yeah. And after a while, it's vote for someone with experience and, <laughs> and veteran status. But uh, so uh, I, I also happen to uh, be blessed to be the, the council president, which I was very fortunate to be yeah. voted in by my colleagues uh, last uh, last Tuesday night, and I'm very thankful to to all of them for uh, lending their support to me. And uh, more importantly, I'm a husband, I'm a dad of two, two young kids, and I live down the street on Bel Air Ave, and um, I'm a lawyer during the day, and weaved in between my morning, noon, and nights, uh, I do my council work. So you're a busy guy. Um, this is probably not saying enough about it, but you are. You're a busy guy. Um, Dan, you do an outstanding job. Now this is year two of uh, being city council president. Year two, it's amazing, cool. and, and no one's no one's ransacked me yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing something right. Looking for um, Mayor. Let's talk a little bit about you. Well, if Dan has experience, I don't know what that makes me because I have <laughs> more experience than than that. Just uh, certainly going by our timelines, but I am currently in just completed my first year of my second four year term for mayor. So I've been mayor for five years. Love it. Um, I've been working with Dan now for three of those five years, two of those five years. On the council? A little over one. <laughs> it just seems like Oh, as like president, yes, 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 one, I know. <laughs> um, but I actually started out in politics in Lynn in 1991. Wow. And I served three terms on the school committee and five terms on the city council before I became the mayor. So, um, yeah, you don't want these newbies with no experience. <laughs> You really need to talk to the veteran people here. We know how to get things done. Um, I also have two children, and again, Dan's are young. Mine, um, my son Colin is a freshman at UMass Amherst. He's um, gone pre-med, and my daughter is a junior at uh, Mia is a junior at Lynn English High School. I'm very proud of both of them, and uh, I can't even tell you where my days begin and days end because they, uh, the job of a mayor can consist of meetings, budget talks, personnel issues, all of which I encountered today. Um, there can be events at night. We, um, I have a meeting scheduled this Saturday and uh, an event at which I have to make an appearance this Sunday. If there's a fire in the middle of the night, I'm up and going to the fire. Right. So uh, I, I take my sleep when I can get it. Uh, but it's a very busy job and it's a very unpredictable job. I always say to my chief of staff that the daily schedule is more of a suggestion than a <laughs> mandate yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it never really seems right. to hold fast um, right through to the end. But um, I'm very, very happy to be working with Dan and the other city councilors. And I think as, as will become clear over the next half hour, um, we've really made a lot of progress for the city and, yeah. and looking forward to more. Collaboratively, you guys work uh, hand in hand, the city council and the mayor's office. Um, let's touch on that a little bit. Who wants to take this? I'm happy to start. Um, so, uh, yeah, city council is obviously the warden at large as we're in the neighborhoods all the time, as is the mayor is. Um, and constituent services and constituent issues come up all the time. Uh, and it's great to have a partner in the executive you know, corner office to work with on important issues when you're trying to get DPW help 
um, lean water and sewer assistance, assistance from the police, and working collaboratively, I think, uh, gives you that, that extra kind of um, oomph or, or power, right. I guess, to, to, to effectuate change. And for, for, the, for the warden at large counselors, um, it is so important to be able to deliver on some of the issues that your constituents are getting, because a lot of times it's the first line of defense because, um, you know, the mayor lives in her house and we have seven ward councilors in uh, four at large scattered around the city and they grab their neighbor. Uh, so if somebody in Westland knows that uh, Councilor Ford lives two doors down, they're knocking on his door. And it's great for Ricky to be able to pick up the phone and talk to the mayor's office and be able to, to work on some of those issues. Right. And I, I've also felt that there was a, a one really c important component of the mayor's job, a councilor's job, is really customer service. Um, so really one of the first things I did when I began my tenure was to make sure that we had little customer satisfac um, satisfaction surveys that went into all of the offices so that when somebody's doing a good job, we know about it. And when there's something that needs attention, we also know about it. They can be done anonymously or they can, the person can leave a name and either an email address or a contact telephone number so that we can go get back to them. Um, but surprisingly enough, and I'm very proud of this, most of them are complimentary. And I know it's, a, it's an old cliche that the people that speak up are the ones that are dissatisfied with something, but we haven't found that to be the case. And it's always nice to be able to go up to a colleague and say, hey, I, I know you're doing a great job. I just got a little sheet on what happened with the man that was trying to do some genealogy research. And um, thank you for helping him out. Thank you for taking the time. I think it makes for as you said, Dan, a collaborative atmosphere in City Hall, um, it keeps the people that we serve happy and, and we need their feedback in order to continually, continually improve the services that we can give to them. So, Customer service, that's a great way of looking at it. I mean, essentially that's what it is. We got 92,000 customers in Lynn that you guys have to work with every single day. So, outstanding. Um, at the beginning of the show, I was like to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we throw some banter back and forth. After doing some research, I found out that um, you're actually a Mensa member. Uh, I know you're probably a little embarrassed that I'm mentioning this to you, but for those at home who don't know, Mensa, correct me if I'm wrong, Mensa is an organization, I'm not sure if it's on a national level or worldwide scale. Worldwide. Worldwide scale. Uh, these guys are considered in a top two percentile of some of the smartest people in the world. So your own mayor of Lynn is a member of Mensa, and I actually looked up a Mensa question, and we're gonna a we're gonna ask this to Dan and Judy right now. We're gonna see if they get yeah. it right. They're gonna write down on a specific piece of paper what they think the answer is. Dan, I, ju I would just like to say that I am a member of Fensa, which is very <laughs> similar to Mensa. Instead of the top two percent, we're the top generally ninety-eight percent. Um, so I'd just like to say that. So I have some kind of acronym that I belong to. <laughs> and, I belong, and I belong to AAA. I gotta I, host the show, man. You, every uh, time, this guy kills me. All right, go to the question. I'm okay. eligible right. to be a member of AARP, which is oh. something that Dan cannot say. Sorry, Mayor, not yet. I don't have any acronyms yet. <laughs> right. Pink media, that's it. All right, here's a question, okay? Um, this was taken from the Mensa website. I know the answer because I Google it. I'm okay. not smart. I am moving forward on the question though. Okay. The same three letter word can be placed in front of the following words to make a new word. Again, the same three letter word can be placed in front of the following words to make a new word. What word is it? These following words are light, break, and time. What three letter word can be added before these three words to make them into a new word? I'll give me 15 seconds. Looks like Judy is ready. I didn't and do it in the form of a our question. Our member is ready. Thank you. Right. So, we'll start with you, Dan. Dan, what do you think the answer is? Well, I drew a picture of my cat, Max. <laughs> that is zoom not in on the here. answer. <laughs> well, Max, hi. <laughs> hi, he says hi back. All right, Judy, what do you got? 
day? Yes, she's so smart. See, look at that. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I was going to get a little T-shirt that says I'm wicked smart. Wicked smart. Yeah, but, absolutely. You know. You got a day. I'm thinking, I don't know. I remember what Dave said. Uh, I think he said Neo. And I said, <laughs> I said Neo time. What does that mean? Uh, Dave's one of our directors. It, it was a thing in The Matrix, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I Neo know. time. It's yeah. Like that movement. <laughs> anyway, all right. 2014, a lot has gone on. Uh, I got three areas of focus here, development, progress, and lifestyle. Let's start with development. Um, Ferry, huge, huge success based on the goals that you guys tried to hit. You went out and you, you, you blew them out of the water. Let's talk about the ferry. <laughs> we don't want to blow people out of the water. Right. Good. We want yeah, to put them in the water with a ferry <laughs> All right. Well, actually, yep. Um, we had a goal set for 10,000 rides for that first summer of 2014. And we actually exceeded it by about 30%. We got about 13,000 riders. So next year, it will be coming back. We're hoping for expansion of service, um, both in the number of trips per day and in the length of the sailing season. So we are looking forward to another successful year with the ferry. Now, do you think that like this ferry th is going to actually help develop the waterfront and win? Yeah, I think it's modeled, uh, actually, in, in, in credit, to, credit to the state, uh, Senator Tom McGee, um, and, and, and the prior administration and, and moving this forward with the help of uh, the city of Lynn, uh, they modeled it after, after Hingham. Uh, and Hingham has a, a commuter ferry as well, and I know that there have been numerous trips back and forth there, and the development around that ferry terminal down in Hingham has been, and it's just been amazing. And we've modeled our Lynn ferry based on that, and you're, you're seeing you're seeing folks being very interested in that area because of the built-in um, commuter access. And I think that it can also serve as a growth point um, just by its very nature. Um, the ferry terminal, we have actually been in initial talks, I've talked to the EDIC about this, about putting up a two-story building n near the commuter ferry terminal and creating some ticketing offices, some administrative offices, and a restaurant on the second floor. So it would give people a little more of a reason to go down, linger a little bit longer, maybe spend a little bit more money right. and mm -hmm. um, spend a little more time here in Lynn getting to know a little a little bit more about Lynn. There's a lot we have to offer here I mean especially when you get I mean Boston's huge uh, huge venue for tourism but I mean when you get tourists who come to this area usually they're interested in the history and the significance of the, the development of America and how we were and Lynn is a top spot 1629 got it right here okay <laughs> I mean this place is amazing the history that, that exists here is definitely worth learning so um, I'm happy to hear that um, with Without a doubt, I think the ferry is going to do a couple things. Um, bring them, bring in some new business, mm -hmm. uh, create some, um, uh, create some people to actually come into Lynn, um, commute out of Lynn. I mean, we're supplying the citizens with an easier access to Boston, which is a huge venue for jobs. Um, another part of development is the auditorium. You guys have done an outstanding job with this. I mean, like he recently, get the let out was there. Um, I mean, the, the amount of performers, the guys, the big names that are playing in Lynn, you're like, really? That's cool. Uh, this is going to come up over and over again because the auditorium is a huge part of driving business and revitalizing downtown Lynn. Uh, but I would like to talk a little bit and, um, you know, how you guys felt 2014 went. I'm going to defer to the mayor because this is really her, her right. baby. And, and Jamie Marsh and her have done a fantastic job of really promoting it and going places to try to attract these great uh, acts. So I'm going to defer we, to you. We had an outstanding year at the Lynn Auditorium in 2014. In fact, from the middle of October through the beginning of December, we had at least show, one show every weekend. And in some cases, we had two shows every weekend. So we have really ramped up the momentum with the auditorium. And then this past week, I went down to New York City with Jamie Marsh, who's the auditorium manager, and Henry Ryan, who's the booking agent for the auditorium. And we uh, um, attended a convention, a showcase, called APAP. And basically, we went shopping for bands, shopping for comedians, shopping for touring shows. Knock-off knock off designer bags? Did you get any of those? No, okay, no, no. We didn't have that much time. <laughs> this was a day trip. Um, but we, as a result of that, we have 10 offers in wow. to some new and expanded entertainment. Um, classic rock is certainly our niche and we will continue to offer that, but there are a couple of offers that are going out in the country genre, in the Motown, oh, yeah. um, a couple of TV shows that have been adapted for stage that will be coming in, um, perhaps even 
a dance show. Uh, again, uh, one of them is based on a current uh, popular dance TV show. So we're really looking forward to 2015 with even more expanded programming, more frequent programming, and always with the idea that we want to keep it affordable entertainment uh, with you know, lots of free parking around, reasonable prices for the beer and wine, and reasonable ticket prices. Yeah, I mean, like, when yeah. it comes down to affordability, you did it right. Not to mention, if you've driven down uh, past City Hall when there is an event going on, I mean, the, 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 all the businesses are packed. Right. It's not a joke. Like, it is serious. Yeah. Like, this is the business driver. Uh, the auditorium, Lynn Auditorium, I think it's lynnauditorium.com. Yes, it is. You can go on and you guys can log yeah. on. You see what shows are coming up. Uh, ticket price is 100% fair. And it's actually a great night out. And you don't have to drive, really. If you want to catch a cab, it costs you, what, five bucks to go anywhere in Lynn. And yeah. it's not a money maker for the city. I mean, we do make money on the shows, but it right. goes into a revolving fund so that we can pay more for the next yeah. artist. Um, and keep enhancing the quality of the, the entertainment that we're getting. We know that the real economic advantage comes to the work, the, the businesses right. that are around the downtown area and even out to Wyoma Square and even out to Westland because people make a night of it now. And right. for that reason, we have a couple of new businesses that have opened and have specifically cited the success of the auditorium as the reason for their expansion into Lynn. Uh, one of them being Rosetti's Restaurant who had a base um, operation in Winthrop, and when they expanded, came to Lynn. Demichis, which was located in Wakefield and then on Eastern Avenue, also cited downtown for their new location uh, and get a good share of the auditorium business. And soon to be opened is RFO Sullivan's, which is a great burger joint from Somerville. Um, oh, if, you, if you don't want to trek all the way to Somerville, just wait a right few there. weeks and come try it out in Lynn. It's yeah. fantastic. We need a good burger, definitely. Yeah, we don't and, have a and, real burger mm. joint in Lynn. Ox, that's it. The yeah, Ox right. is the only guys to do it. Mm -hmm. what do you got? And if I just made, to, to piggyback off that, because of the successes of the auditorium, we were able to really focus on the downtown and do some rezoning the downtown right. mm -hmm. to, to kind of a, attract those businesses. Right. And Arpo Sullivan's, you know, it used to be Kevin's Cultural Corner. It was abandoned for a while. They had a fire on the roof. I mean, that was really a building that yeah, no one gave much credit to. Um, and they became under the city receivership. And uh, we worked with your office and EDIC to put together um, uh, basically a, a method upon which to attract uh, the type of businesses that we want. And some of the restrictions in the, in the request for proposals we put out were that you needed a, you know, X amount of years of experience with restaurant, restauranteering, um, that you had a, a certain uh, a level of, um, of financial stability. And I mean, we landed it with our RFO Sullivan's, and had we not, if we had done the old way, where you just put it out to bid, and someone bids f no. five bucks, and yeah. then you get, you know, you don't get the type of business <laughs> you want, right. being a little a little exaggerated, but that's just worked out well, and only because of of the auditorium. Right. And I, I want to give a lot of credit to Charlie Gaeta too, yeah. the Lynn Housing Authority, because he is looking to. Again, the wave, the ripple effect just seems to extend out a little bit further with each passing year, but he's looking to transform lower um, Washington Street, uh, the Sagamore Street, Suffolk Street area. There are already some new infill houses that are up there, some townhouses, they're beautiful, and he is looking to expand that further downward toward where the Dimes Package Store is and, and, and that stretch that really could right. use some improvement with again that mixed use of residential and and commercial or office space so I think you can look forward to that in in the coming years as well without a doubt I mean <laughs> development it's Lynn's on the up and up when it comes to like rezoning new businesses uh, keep your eye on the item it's gonna be there keep your eye on Lincoln too uh, <laughs> moving forward uh, progress some of the stuff that we've seen um, of course we talked about a little bit with the ferry uh, we want to talk about some of the development that we've seen in 2014 uh, the waterfront outside the ferry there has to have been a lot going on I know Beacon uh, Chevy is in the, in the works for development uh, the GE gear plant um, of course Pickering recently before the show you guys had mentioned to me that we'll be able to move forward with that 
Marshall's looking well. Let's talk about this. Who wants to take this one? You start. I'll just start. I mean, honestly, there are so many projects going on in the pipeline and about to start that uh, for the next, I would say, decade, you will see such a transformation in this city. Now, that's not typical. I mean, this no. isn't, you don't see this type of volume of development that happens no. on, 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 on a yearly basis. Well, I, I think it's it's credit to, to, the, to the mayor's office, to the city council, to, to the, uh, the folks who work in City Hall or, or, or sister agencies. People have, uh, our arms are wide open. We're willing to work with just about anybody if they want to improve this city. Uh, I, uh, we've worked with the business community probably at the, the highest level that I could ever remember. And they've reciprocated in saying and telling their friends, hey, Lynn's a place where you can do business, you can get things done, uh, affordable, effectively, efficiently. And we've kind of stepped back from our probably old typical role of being too much of a to a, of an obstacle to, to being the facilitator of bringing the and that, in. that's very very important and the state delegation has also been tremendously helpful in putting us in touch with state agencies and state grant programs that have enabled us to move forward perhaps a little more quickly than we might otherwise have been able to do on some of these projects the MSBA has been tremendous Steve Grossman was a real friend to Lynn when when he was in office as the uh, state treasurer and by virtue of that holding that office the um, overseer of the MSBA the Mass School Building Authority Pickering and Marshall are going to be the first two new schools built in Lynn since the 1990s and if you go by the Marshall site you'll see it's starting to take shape as a school I just got a uh, construction update they're actually a little bit ahead of schedule and I think that the knock on wood fairly mild winter we have had so far has helped yeah, with that or twice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's scheduled to open in September of 2016 now Pickering we know that the pro the whole process for Marshall took six years so right. we are at the beginning of this process with Pickering but we're hoping that if it follows the same as the schedule the same as Marshall that we'll have something a new building to be opened in 2020 and it will be a fantastic yeah. new environment for our, our middle school students. It's so important to attract and keep, retain young families. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't realize it before I had children. You, you think, oh, okay, the schools are there, and I went to, the, to public schools, and you don't, you don't give the physical plant much thought because the teaching going on is extraordinary inside the building. But then when you're having children and you, you start to, to view some of these schools, and they are significantly aged. Um, my daughter does one day a week uh, speech therapy in an Aborn, and it was built in the late 1900s. It's just <laughs> so long yes, ago. It was. We need to focus on that to retain, you know, families who want to grow their families here. Right. Cool. We actually have five schools currently operating that were built a hundred years ago yeah. or more. Wow. If this was Marblehead, uh, they have a school that's 20 or 30 years old, and it's like, you know, how can we have our kids going to the schools? There? Exactly. I want to talk a little bit about the um, Lynn's lifestyle. Uh, recently, we've got a downtown Lynn Cultural District uh, director, Emily Ruddick. Uh, that was a big part of this. Um, let's talk about what we're trying to do with the Lynn lifestyle, especially in regards to business and culture. I want to tell you something that made me really happy one day. Dan was late. <laughs> for a meeting. It's like my wife. And, and no, 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 I wasn't happy that Dan was late. I was happy with his explanation because he said, I'm sorry I'm late. I was stuck in traffic. There's a concert and I couldn't get through the downtown because there were so many cars and people downtown. <laughs> that's that's right. awesome. That's that a cool. good problem yeah. to have. And um, we hope to, to continue to have that problem um, obviously we don't want it to be to the point where it obstructs right. or impedes people or makes them not want to come but when you said that I, I thought to myself you know if there's traffic it means there are people downtown yeah. and if there are people downtown it means that the image of downtown right. is changing the perception is changing and people want to be there it's dark out the street lights are on and people are coming out in droves downtown. It can really transform the the feel of an entire city, and and it's the the downtown is our heartbeat right now. Absolutely, it's a beautiful venue too. I mean, like between like the history and the architecture that's involved there, and then the organizations that are actually there. Yep. I mean, there's a lot to do downtown Lynn. 
it's it's worth a visit. <laughs> Go down there. And the museum has a great gift shop too. Oh, if you yeah. ever want something, you maybe yeah. maybe some snowbirds that right. went to Florida, and you yep. want the, the, to remind them yep. of home. There are so many Lynn themed gifts and objects and memorabilia that you can find. Um, very reasonable prices. Yep. And if you're a Lynn Museum member, I believe it's even less expensive. It is. So it that's is. Where I got this thing. There you go. Every year, I, I, did, I did get shopping. one of those. I'm well, a member. A member Dan. Well, I am a member. Well, you pay five bucks for it. I'm calling Joe Scanlon for my. Uh... <laughs> no, that's graft. You don't want to be doing that. You're a nice, honest politician. We don't but want... I, I am a member. We don't want yeah, stories. I feel like I've been slighted by this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, every year I go down there and I'll pick up a couple of gifts for Christmas. Uh, I got some of the fluff cups, mm -hmm. and like they had the movie like cut out the old movie theaters and uh, you know. Uh, the guy over at Campbell, he's going to kill me. I can't remember his name. Uh, Corey over at... Uh, Corey Jackson. Uh, yeah, Corey Jackson. Mm. Jackson, that's what it was. And Corey Jackson over at uh, Arts After Hours had told me an interesting bit about the Lynn history and how it was actually tied into the movie theaters. Um, Lynn, Lynn, City of Sin. Lynn really wasn't considered like a sinful area, but it was where you would go out and have fun and, and do your nighttime activities. So um, I guess we could have been accredited as the first City of Sin. Uh, but it doesn't go to what a lot of people believe. It's more a night out, fun, and entertaining. Um, <laughs> and we have the movies returning to Lynn, not in the form of a movie theater, right. but in the form of movie production. Right, yeah. So we just um, recently, John Travolta starred in a movie called The Forger that was shot in Lynn. In Lynn. American Hustle was here in Lynn. Right. Huge movie coming out next year with Johnny Depp right. and Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm glad I said his name correctly. <laughs> um, it's called Black Mass, and right. it's based on a book uh, about Whitey Bulger and John Connolly and, and their relationship with one another. Mm. Um, so, uh, Don't forget I guess your star performance, and that's my boy. <laughs> Which is yeah, Adam Sandler came and did a couple movies here, too. Yep. I was an angry bowler. In yes, the background, yeah, you were yeah, in the movie. Is, is that's my boy. I, I, watched, I watched it with my brother in law, and I go, That's my mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing media since I was 11 years old. Never once have been, a, you probably have to be the mayor to get in a movie. No, nah, you but don't. That was cool, Are you the man. Like, union or what? Did they give you a No, card yet? because I don't speak. Oh, they, yeah, um, in Black Mass, I have really big hair, and I am, <laughs> I'm a patron at an upscale. Scale restaurant. So I had to spend about four hours sipping on an imaginary drink <laughs> in the old Anthony's Hawthorne in August, and it oh, was wow, it was pretty right hot. And, but but they must have sprayed my hair tremendously yeah. because it held up through the whole thing. The whole the whole day. Uh, yeah, for a while. And you know it's fun, and it brings again it brings crowds to downtown. They want to catch a glimpse of some of these guys. Adam Sandler, he was fantastic. I mean I. I watched him as he greeted the crowd he'd go yep. out sign autographs and not to say the others right. aren't as well but I didn't actually see right. any of the others in their downtime so I don't right. know what they did but but it's just really spurred a lot of interest in coming to downtown yeah. absolutely and it's really important for the I city mean, just one funny Council Colucci has a great story where he went to Adam Sandler's playing basketball at North Shore Community College Richard Colucci goes in with his dog and says hey Adam stops and says what oh. I want you to take a picture with my dog. <laughs> I got that picture. And Adam Sandler said, well, let me finish the game, finish the game, and take a picture with his dog. And we're all getting texts from Richard Colucci and his dog with Adam Sandler. go, where are you? And I'm going, stop, Bongo. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, of all things, I mean, have a picture with the dog. That's fun. Adam Sandler's the man. I mean, like, when you meet, like, I've never gotten the chance to meet with him, but all the people who talk about this guy, like, they're like, he's a real dude. It's like, yeah, no, he is a real guy. Well, he's from New Hampshire, Yeah, too. he's from the area, too, you know. And he's he, kind of got that yep, mass effect. And a huge Boston Bruins fan. Okay. Because one of the nights they were filming uh, That's My Boy, they had to take a break because the Bruins were in the Stanley Cup Finals that right. year. And they actually had to let him watch some of the third period. Oh, wow. So they used that time to, like, reset the set and right. move some of the trolleys that they have the cameras and the lights on and the, and the boom microphones and all of that. So, it, it, and then he emerged <laughs> from his his um, little tent and he was all happy because the Bruins had won and <laughs> went back to filming. Now so. he's like, he's always that guy. Tell who 
Anyway, Adam Sandler, we love you. Um, <laughs> definitely, we set out to have the show be a little short. We're gonna go. We're gonna go for it. Okay, we definitely got to get through two, 2015 too. Um, 2014, outstanding year. I mean, with with the ferry, the auditorium, um, the waterfronts becoming um, a, a place of interest for businesses. Um, we've got new schools coming. I mean. Good job, and, and thank you guys. Like, I mean, just as a citizen of Lynn, I mean, I know it's not easy, and I'm sure there's a lot of days you wake up and you're like, I have to do this again. Um, and it's it, it should be recognized, so outstanding job. Oh, a lot of credit goes to a lot of people. Absolutely. Right, that's what I'm saying, yeah. So many, and, and the rest, mm. I mean, really, this is a collective effort by everyone in the right. city. Right, it is. Collaborations is, a, it's a, I mean, it's not only a, a key word here, but it's like, it's imperative that we use it. Because like you had said, you know, you reach out to these mass state departments, you work among city council members, you know, you're in the police department. Like you said, if there's a fire in Lynn, you got to go down there. I mean, like, Lynn has a lot of people who take a certain amount of pride in their town, and it's showing now. Um, and I just want to say, like, well, let them know that I'm thanking them as well. I wish we had room for everybody. I think you just say it in the camera, yes. right? Oh, that's right. Camera. Yes, thank you the to TV everybody. Line. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and then we have our transplants who we have accepted as true blue linners, like Emily Ruddick. She loves this city. Yep. Yeah. She didn't live here when she took that job. She's in our, she's in our <laughs> promo. And she <laughs> saw that. Yeah, yeah. So she loves the promo yeah. over She's and over again. Really, She's one of the most enthusiastic people that I know when yeah. it comes to Lynn. Yeah. She's, She's brilliant. been terrific for the city. Definitely. Uh, 2015, as we get into a new year, of course, everybody's always concerned with what's going to come. Um, especially in politics, I've learned, and you guys probably don't get a lot, and it's like all the stuff that you've done, it's like, good, now do something else. Right? <laughs> um, 2015, finances are like among the top tier uh, criteria. Everybody wants to talk about them. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that at the beginning, and then we'll get into some of the things that we're actually trying to do and continue to do in 2015. Um, but uh, talk of the town right now, net school spending obligation, who wants to take this one that's probably more I am not a member of the school committee nor do I, <laughs> nor do I dabble in school nice, committee nice, nice <laughs> no, I, 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 I vote for school committee members and I believe that they should be you know they yeah. have their and, and task and I have mine and the mayor has hers and the council has also been very supportive in our efforts to deal with the net school spending issue which really arose through no fault of our own with a reinterpretation of what could and could not be counted as net school spending in 2013 so we have been working very closely, again, with the state delegation, with the state, with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and um, with our legislature in order to create a, a four-year plan whereby we are addressing the net school spending issue and we are requesting certain waivers and going over our school budget with these officials to make sure that we are complying with what they would like to see. I really think we're in pretty good shape as far as coming out of that, you know, getting ourselves through and coming out of that four-year period. Uh, as far as free cash, we have over $14 million in free cash certified this year. I, as a, in my way of planning <coughs> budgets, I don't like to use that money to incur an ongoing expense. So I don't think that you'll see it necessarily going toward hiring a whole lot of new people. I have talked to the fire department chief and I told him once we get the firm numbers on the net school spending, as long as the remaining money will bear me out, I will get him a new fire truck. It's like talking to a little kid. I want a new fire <laughs> truck and I want lots of red lights on it and I need a tower. It's actually for ladder four. Right. Our tower truck, which is the most expensive type of truck other than a Look, one of those tractor trailer type of trucks, but it, it's about a million dollars that we'll need. But I've told him that is very high on my list of priorities. Um, I told Chief Coppinger that I really want to do whatever it takes to get the CLTs back in operation. They were tremendous in helping to humanize the police, which I think is very important um, given current events over the last several months but they're also very important in recognizing problems before they become big problems. Right. And it's just simply not as easy to do that when you're driving around in a cruiser. It's more impersonal. Right. People can't really flag you down. They don't even think to flag you down unless there's trouble. But when the cops are on the bikes and they're just stopping and chatting with the kids in the neighborhood, stopping in the convenience store to see the store owner and see what's going on over there, it, it makes for 
um, one of the tenets of community policing, which is to know the area, know the players in the area, and be able to react quickly before something happens. And, and it was such a good success, and it pained me to see it have to go when we had to go through that initial jolt of the net school spending changes. Um, but I am very hopeful that this year we'll be able to bring at least some of the sectors back. We were up to six at the height of this, which was one for every patrol sector in the entire city of Lynn. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to bring at least part of it back, if not the whole thing. And, and to achieve that in 2015 with um, the news, the recent news that we could be facing a $760 to $1 billion deficit uh, in the state would be quite an achievement. Well, I, I get kind of cheap on other things. <laughs> when people want to go on, uh, you know, conventions that are somewhere really far away or they're going to uh, extend for many days. So the out-of-state travel budget has been cut down quite a bit and, and any out-of-state travel has to be approved by me um, before it even happens. I have to make sure it's for a reasonable duration um, at a reasonable cost um, for, the, for the event itself and if there are overnight accommodations we don't want people staying at the Ritz. Right. They don't have to stay at uh, something significantly Fleabag less Motel, but we do Motel. want to keep an eye because all of those little items add up over time right and we want the things that are important to our city to either be maintained or to be in like in the case of the CLTs to be revived and I can't do that if if spending yeah. is unchecked mm -hmm. and and I think everybody in city in the city after five years kind of gets the message that this is how I want to do it right and everybody's been been really good about their their requests for their their conventions and their travel I think it's a smart decision to save. I mean, you know, obviously when it comes to development, spending is important. But in the long run, I mean, like sustainability is the key. And, you know, you never know what next year is going to bring. I mean, we've had snowstorms in April. And, like, <laughs> you know, it's like New England's a tough town, man. It's like there's a lot going on here, especially when it comes to weather. So, like, we got to budget our cash. I think what you guys are doing, I think, I think it's a smart idea. Save some cash, put it away for later, and when you need it, it's there. I mean, I... I I might send my checks over to you. So you <laughs> but I'm don't, not good don't, at it. don't you try to do that in your personal yeah, life? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So just add like six zeros after the numbers, and, and then you could do it for the city. Well, so. Six zeros before that. Was numbers, <laughs> but, um, all right. So definitely, without a doubt, um, net school spending obligations in the works, and you guys are working on this with the state at the state level. Um, community liaison team. I think that that um, program is awesome because it's it is it's community engagement. These guys are going out and they're having conversations. And like you said, humanizing the police, it's huge, huge today. So whoever's out there and is going to have a say in this decision, um, really consider how important this, this group of police officers is to the city of Lynn. Um, outside that, um, Water and Sewer Commission seems to be a big deal. Um, I don't know much about it. Um, I know that there's a plan. They've got a budget in place. What's going on with this? Well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to chime in too much on this only because, you know, we, we appoint folks, uh, the council and the mayor, uh, mayor's office appoints commissioners to that board. Okay. Uh, and we, and we, we, we vet the candidates to be commissioners. We, we really rely on them to use their expertise and their best judgments as residents. So I'm going to shy away a little bit of um, expressing too much of my own personal uh, preference in this, but there's a situation in the city of Lynn where we've separated the water, uh, the, the, some, the, the, the water separation project that went on I think under the McManus administration many years ago yeah. in Eastland was not completed in Westland. There's some flooding issues in Westland, there's some overflow issues in Westland uh, discharging to our harbor. And the water and sewer is under a, uh, I, think, I believe, under a federal decree to, to address that issue, and I believe they are. They're, they're, at least they're starting the process to do it. That's exactly right. And I've, I've said publicly before that I, um, first of all, take a hands-off approach to the Water and Sewer Commission because it was designed to be independent of city government. That's why we um, don't really have direct involvement. That's right. why we have appointees. Right. That's why that board elects the people or so selects the people who are going to be the executive director of water and sewer, the treasurer of water and sewer. It's all done independently. Right. And, and furthermore, I really shy away from commenting on it because they have the expertise available to them. 
I wouldn't know the first thing about separating storm drains and overflow potential and hundred year <laughs> storms and all of the things that they take into consideration when they make their decisions. I just know that West Lynn has a bad flooding program pro problem and I hope that the, the Water and Sewer Commission in whatever vote they take is going to do something to alleviate the flooding that's down there. The Alley Street area, the River Street area, right. it's been going on for decades and, right. and those people deserve a little relief. So definitely down at the uh, Water and Sewer Commission, uh, those are the guys who are going to have all the detail on it. Like they mentioned, there's a commissioner in place, they got a board in place. So if you're looking for some more detail, reach out to those guys, but hopefully they can bring some um, some uh, resolutions to our, or results rather, uh, to our mem to our uh, citizens down in that area. Right. Um, lastly, uh, save this question for last, or the subject cate category for last, because it's such a huge, huge part of what we're trying to do in Lynn, revitalizing the downtown area. Um, and if you're just joining us, a lot of what we talked about revolves around business and development here in Lynn. Uh, the auditorium was a huge part in that. Now we've got rezoning, which is happening. Um, and this is going to allow for a lot more businesses to come in here and hopefully bring in a lot more people to patronize some of the local business here. Uh, so let's talk about some of your plans. 2015, what are you guys trying to achieve when it comes to revitalizing the downtown Lynn area? Well, sometimes it's as simple as sweeping the streets. Yeah. On odd and even nights. Absolutely. Everything looks so much neater. Um, the trash program, it's, it wasn't specifically adopted to take care of downtown, but go downtown on trash day at right. some point and see how neat it looks compared to what it looked like six months ago. I agree. Um, it, it really creates for a more uniform appearance, a more sanitary appearance, and um, that will attract people. Nobody wants to go to right. a downtown where they're looking at chicken cups and bottles. Cups and, and exactly broken glass. So the street sweeping combined with the trash kind of sets the table for the welcoming environment. And then some of the business people we have down there and the terrific enterprises that they've started that that really we just have to as a city and as the city government to continue to support their efforts because we alone can't revitalize downtown. Right. We can't sustain the, the success of downtown. We need the people there to be able to use us as a resource. And whether it's getting small businesses, we're setting up um, a, a seminar. It's actually going to be done first for the Khmer population to invite um, Cambodian businessmen and women in to hear about our microloan programs, to hear about how the city might be able to facilitate their opening or expanding a business. And if that's successful, we're going to expand it to a general international seminar because there is so much diversity downtown. And that's one of the things that makes it popular and attractive. You can eat from 20 different cuisines. Right. Uh, um, just because of the various uh, ethnicities that are represented down there. So we want them all to know that the city of Lynn is standing by to help them succeed um, and we're going to open our doors to them. Participation from the citizens is huge. Uh, if anybody watched the State of the Union address, the big message that President Obama was trying to get across is that the American people need to better themselves and that's how it starts. That's how you build a stronger country. I mean, it starts at the community level too. Uh, when it comes to revitalizing a downtown area, there's only benefit to people who live there and live within the city. So I just, you know, the, the whole waste management thing, I think it's an excellent, excellent resource. I mean, not to mention, like, the fact that we're actually starting to recycle and we're contributing in that area, I mean, that's huge. I, I'm a green guy. I like to consider myself that way, not just because I'm wearing the tie, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, right? Uh, green cop. I mean. Green <laughs> party, green cop. They were going to give me that, and I said, no, I can't. I don't want to be that guy. But uh, moving on, um, I just want to mention to, to the business owners and the organization leaders who take time to actually clean up in front of their business. It's a huge, huge, huge part of revitalizing the Lynn image and continue to do that. The Dennis, one of our camera guys, knows when he's here, we split that responsibility. You'll see me out there sweeping and Dennis is out there sweeping. I definitely think I'm better at it than him. <laughs> but I probably care a little bit more. But at some point in time, um, 
he'll jump on board with me. But um, in revitalizing Lynn, definitely business is going to be a big part of this. Yeah. You guys are going through some rezoning to do yeah. such. Um, the area is definitely clean. And I, I cut you off before uh, you were going to say something else, Dan. Sorry, Sorry. actually, I, was just gonna, I, I agree with, with the mayor's uh, sentiments about the downtown. And, and, and what's exciting about 2015 is that um, we're actually moving, now we're moving together onto the Boston Street Corridor up to Wyoming Square. And right. we've uh, secured some funding for EDIC, who's going to do a study, because that area desperately needs <coughs> rezoning, which will revitalize that area it's all about targeting our economic engines and those economic engines they bring in small business jobs they bring in wealth to our community they increase property values and that this it's just a ripple effect it bleeds into public safety it goes into public education and uh, we're, we're tackling some problems that haven't been addressed in literally almost 100 years right that's nuts our, our zoning yeah. code was written in 1920 Seven? 1928? <laughs> Twenty-five, twenty-six. It, it, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, Nobody's even ancient. alive. You can put a tannery <laughs> downtown. You can put a tannery on Boston Street right now by right. I'm going to do it. No, no you're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not any ideas. But. but, and just to add on to that, now, reviewing zoning laws, zoning ordinances, is not glamorous. <laughs> it doesn't get front page headlines. Right. But. There's something very else, very, very, uh, something else that's very important that Dan has taken on, and I'm very pleased about it, um, and that is the city charter. Back in 2011, when I gave my speech at the inauguration of the new city council, after the 2011 election, I called on the councilors to take a good look at the city charter because there are items that have to be revised in there. Some of them just make no sense in this day and age. Right. Um, for example, we've gone from a two-year to a four-year term for mayor, and yet the charter only addresses what happens if I am to become, in, or the mayor is to become incapacitated in the first nine months of office or in the last 15 months of office. So. We what a, happens? We flip a video? coin in between. I guess. Yeah, it's like, I don't know what you do in between. We pull a lottery. Okay, that, Sean, you're the mayor. That's a, <laughs> you know, that's an awesome task. That is a very time-consuming task, and one of the things that Dan and I got together on um, in one of our Saturday meetings, just very casual and very productive. Was, Perhaps I live like a. Yeah, you, you yards just walk you. over. I go, I'm, I'm putting out cookies. Come on over, Can Dan. The mayor come come on over. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. And my dog chimes in sometimes, yeah. too. But, mm -hmm. um, but he showed me some of the things that he would like to see changed. And although we don't agree with how they should be changed in all cases, he hit it out of the park as far as what we have to acknowledge as a deficiency in the charter and, and what we have to work on. So I know you put a lot of time Thank into you. that and I really appreciate that. Well, you know, like I said, going back to having a good partnership with you and be able to bring those things to you. And we're constantly trying to Im improve the city and we're constantly trying to make it not just, not just great now, but 10, 15, 20 years from now, we're not going to be in these positions oh, forever. Speak for yourself. Maybe you'll be. <laughs> what do you mean? Mayor for life. No, no, Maybe. No, no, you no, keep no, making no. me laugh. You got my it's true, but, yeah. but, but we're trying, I mean, I think our approach is what do we do for the future of the city? Right. And that's what we're focused on. I mean, we can talk about the past and what we've done in the past, but really, uh, hardly do we ever sit around and say, wow, remember when we did this? It's always what are we going to do next? And who's that going to help? And how's that going to help the city of Lynn? And so, Again, um, being able to bounce those ideas off you and compromise is so important. We wish there would be more compromise in yeah. America and a number mm -hmm. of, of uh, sensitive issues, but it is, it's, it's benefiting, I think, Lynn. Right. And just for the record, it's funny you bring that up because there is this Democrat-Republican divide right. in the, or perceived divide in the country. You're a registered Democrat. I'm a registered Republican. Yeah. I don't think that that has once created any kind of a rift on anything that we've dealt with because our focus is on what will be the best outcome yeah. for the for the city. Period. Pick, and up, how do we get there? Picking up trash isn't a Republican issue or not. <laughs> no, it isn't. You know, filling <laughs> potholes, it's, it's just not. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, guys, 
every time I get you on the program, I always have an outstanding time. Uh, one, because just as a citizen, I get to like ask you all these questions. And I'm very <laughs> lucky to do that. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would like to get to have this time to talk with you. Um, I know you're very busy, both of you guys. So I want to I want to just say thank you for coming on to the program, um, guys. If you're just joining us, what we're talking about today is the uh, City of Lynn 2014 review and the 2015 uh, vision. You guys hit the nail on the head uh, when you're talking about it. When, when it what it really comes down to is what's going to happen next and what are we going to do next compromise all that stuff you guys hit the, the the nail in the head over and over and over again um very excited to see what's going to happen in 2015 um happy to hear that you guys are working collaboratively uh that's it for the program from the studio here at lincam tv i'm sean donahue wishing you all the best